exactly this is uh, week 4 and lecture 1 uh, we are still in the same uh, topic like last week so this is the the next subtopic in topic 2 uh, measuring and improving speed so let's see here many strategic initiatives undertaken by firms today focus on improving the speed of operations i think uh, now everything is about speed uh, everybody want to make things uh, very fast so uh, in terms of costing in terms of costing uh, businesses also focus on uh, speed uh, the faster the the process or the life cycle of a product uh, the the lower the cost so let's say here uh, manufacturing cycle lead time lead or throughput time is the amount of time between the receipt of a customer order and the shipment of that order and then note that start and finish time of the cycle can be defined in several ways so this points uh, is about the manufacturing cycle time manufacturing cycle time uh, the definition for this term is uh, is depending on the the firm uh, some firm define the terms the term as time between the receipt of a customer order and shipment of that order other firms they can def uh, other firms or businesses they define uh, the term uh, in different ways uh, for example it the term can be defined as the start time uh, the time raw material are ordered and uh, finish at the time production is completed so just remember the manufacturing cycle time is related to the life cycle of a product Manufacturing cycle efficiency is defined as processing time divided by the total uh, cycle time. So the MCE or manufacturing cycle efficiency separate total cycle time into processing time, inspection time, material handling time, waiting time and so on. Most firms would like to see MCE close to 1. Okay, so in short, uh, most businesses they want the the cycle uh, as fast as they can. Uh, fast cycle. They want fast uh, fast cycle because the faster the cycle, most of the time the the lower the cost. Constraints are activities or policies that slow a product's total cycle time. Okay, I think you have learned about uh, a bit about theory of constraint in ACT three one three one. I think it is related to uh, when a business uh, uh, produce uh, produces something. Uh, uh, theory of constraint explains about something that uh, that that uh, limit the capacity of a business to produce something sometimes the constraint is machine sometimes the constraint is uh, labor space etc okay let's see here theory of constraint focuses on improving speed at the constraints to decrease overall cycle time so when there is a constraint then that factor uh, limit like I said limit the capacity of a business to produce uh, its product so we if you improve the the constraint or reduce the constraint then the the production process can be can be faster or quicker okay uh, five step in theory of constraint so if there is a problem of constraint, these five steps can be done. 
first identify the constraint and then second determine the most profitable product mix given the constraint uh, number three maximize the flow through the constraint uh, number four add capacity to the constraint number five redesign the manufacturing process for flexibility and fast cycle time Okay, this is theory of constraint example. HPI manufactures both the second generation uh, and the third generation uh, HPI, HPI 2 and HPI 3 of hearing aids. Prices are competitive at 600 and 1200 respectively and not are not expected to change. The monthly order orders average 3,000 units for HPI 2 and $1,800 unit, 1,800 units for HPI 3. New customers are told they may have to wait at least 3 weeks for their orders and management is concerned about the need to improve speed in the manufacturing process. So, to apply the theory of constraint, uh, step one, identify the constraint. To identify the constraint, uh, a business can develop a flow diagram which shows the sequence and time of each process. Uh, so, this is the example. For this business, if the business wants to to identify the constraint, then the business can use a flow diagram. So you see here, the flow diagram is like this. So for product HPI2, the flow is very straightforward. See here, the first one is electronic components, price 300. And then assemble earpiece 110 minutes. Install other electronics 40 minutes Final assembly and test 30 minutes Packs, uh, Pack and ship 25 minutes That one is HPI 2 HPI 3 They are a bit complex product See here uh, The first one is the, the product has computer chip uh, So the price is for that item is 4450 and then test and program chip 30 minutes install other electronics 40 minutes and then uh, in the there is also another uh, thing in the process uh, electronic component for HPI 3 see here electronic component the price or, or the cost of that is $300 Assemble earpiece 130 minutes Final assembly and test 60 minutes Pack and ship 25 minutes So that for product 3 So that is the step 1 In the theory of constraint So in this step This step is uh, for identifying the constraint So let's see the step 2 Okay, okay there's, use the flow diagram and additional operation data to identify the constraint for HPI. There is difficulty maintaining adequate uh, staffing in all process areas except process 5. Analysis of the process flow, staffing level and process time level reveals the constraint occurs in process 4. Perform final assembly and test. The other 4 processes have slight time okay after the business used the diagram the business has identified that the constraint occurs in process 4 uh, which is the performing the final assembly and test so the thing is if you want to use theory of constraint so first you have to to develop the diagram and identify the constraint Okay, and then uh, step two as uh, as determine the most profitable product mix given the constraint. Okay, let's see. The most profitable mix provides the maximum total profit for both products. 
First, use throughput margin to determine the most profitable profitable product given the constraint. Throughput margin equal to selling price less material cost. In the example, the relevant measure of profitability is throughput margin per minute in final assembly and testing. Okay, you have learned a bit about this. Uh, in 3131, I think. You have learned about the ma uh, theory of constraint. How to uh, to decide uh, which product is the best to produce when there is a, a constraint of resource. Okay, so uh, this is the example here. HPI3 has higher throughput margin per unit. But with the time constraint in process 4, HPI2 is the more profitable product per constraint time in it. Okay, so how to calculate the... Uh, the most profitable product per constraint per resource uh, per uh, per constraint okay i think in 31 ACT 3131 you have learned how to calculate the highest uh, contribution margin per constraint per unit of constraint uh, so now uh, the same uh, the same thing you just you have to calculate how 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 much is the profit per unit of uh, constraint resource okay let's see here hp2 and hp3 price 600 and 1200 material cost 30750 throughput margin 30450 constraint time 30 and 60 so throughput Per minute is ten dollar and seven dollar and fifty. So you can see there the throughput per minute for HPI three is higher compared to uh, HPI two. So when as a result, uh, H no no. So the the throughput per minute. Uh, for HPI2 is higher compared to HPI3 so when you have seen this uh, so you know that uh, the business has to, po to focus on HPI2 because it is more profitable per unit of constraint resource uh, HPI will produce 3,000 3, units for HPI2 since it is the most or the more profitable and remaining capacity will be used to produce HPI3 HPI2 will use 1500 uh, minutes 1500 hours of the 2400 hour capacity the good the 900 hours remaining allow for production of 900 units of HPI 3. You have seen this calculation, like I said earlier, in ACT 3131, I think. Example 3, step 3, maximize the flow through the constraint. Uh, look for ways to speed the flow by simplifying the process. Improving product design, reducing setup, and reducing other delays. Objective is to balance the flow of production through the system. Processes prior to and including uh, the constraint by carefully timing and scheduling those activities. Uh, still in step 3, another method is to use TAKT time, the ratio of total time available to the expected customer demand. For example, after allowing for employee break time, a manufacturing plant operation has 400 minutes of manufacturing time available per day. If average customer uh, demand is 800 unit, the TAKT time is 30 seconds per unit. The TAKT time of 30 seconds is used to balance the flow of product through the process. 400 minutes divided by 800 units, 30 seconds per unit of TAKT time.
3 steps 4 and 5 Step 4 Add capacity to the constraint uh, Adding new machine or additional labor is is a long term measure that can improve flow uh, through the constraint So that is the, the long term solution The final solution If the, a business has a constraint uh, in the short term uh, solution is to produce a product that is most profit, uh, profitable uh, per unit of uh, constraint but in the long term uh, the best solution is to uh, to add capacity to the constraint if you uh, the business has uh, maybe the business has to purchase new machine to hire additional labor etc number five redesign the manufacturing process for flexibility and fast cycle time this step involves the most complete strategic response to the constraint because simply removing one or more minor features of a product might speed up the production process significantly okay this is like uh, uh, like a case study or example also the five steps in strategic decision making importance of speed in the fashion industry the Burberry group PLC so see here speed is always important now uh, everything uh, has to be done very quickly so let's see the, the thing that we can see here first uh, step 1. Determine the strategic issues surrounding the problem. Burberry competes on design and innovation in the fashion industry. Okay, that is the issue. The second step is identify the alternative action. Focus on design or operation. So, step 3, obtain information and conduct analysis of the alternatives. Using an enterprise system, SAP, Burberry carefully determines product and process cost. Step 4, based on strategy and analysis, choose and implement the desired alternative. Burberry CEO decides to simplify the product line to one brand, one image. The focus uh, on more efficient and less costly operation. The, so the alternative is there are two alternatives focus on design or operation so the the CEO decide to uh, focus on the the production I think so and step 5 provide an ongoing evaluation of the effectiveness of implementation in step 4 so Basically, it shows that um, this is the steps that you have to do in strategic decision making. First, determine the strategic issues and then identify the alternative action. And then you obtain op information and conduct analysis. Number four, uh, choose the best alternative. Number five, uh, provide an ongoing evaluation. You have to... Uh, to check again the, the, the decision and do improvement okay now here this is the comparison between theory of constraint and activity based costing activity based costing is a, a management practice or technique that is very popular uh, so here uh, you can see the comparison between theory of of constraint and activity based costing so main objective for the theory of constraint the main objective is short term focus throughput margin analysis based on materials and material related cost but abc is uh, has a long term focus and analysis of all product costs excuse me resource constraint included explicitly a principal focus of theory of constraint um, for ABC, there is no, uh, there is no focus on, uh, on, on resource constraint, uh, but ABC analyze and analyze all the activities in the, in the, in the business. Uh, cost drivers. Uh, see here, theory of constraint: no direct utilization, uh, utilization of cost driver. 
but ABC develops an understanding of course drivers at all levels. Major issue, uh, major use, uh, theory of constraint, optimization of production flow, and short term product mix. Uh, but for ABC, the major use is for strategic pricing and profit planning. So I think uh, theory of constraint is uh, is smaller in focus compared to activity based costing. Activity based costing uh, is a management technique. Can uh, ABC can be used as a uh, as a uh, costing system and also can be used as a management system. But theory of constraint is only focusing on the constraint, uh, how to 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 manage uh, constraint uh, in a business. So here, this is uh, about committed and incurred costs. Let's see what is here. Committed and incurred costs. Percent of the total cost. Okay. Incurred cost is the cost that a business has to pay. So this is, I think, about that. Life cycle costing. Life cycle costing provides a more complete perspective of product cost and profitability that pricing based on manufacturing cost alone. More complete perspective of product cost and profitability than pricing based on. Okay, life cycle costing uh, is re if. Uh, is related to every step in the in the life cycle of a product. Uh, it is, it is, not only focused uh, uh, looking at the manufacturing cost, but all all costs uh, related to every step in the life cycle of the of a product. Remember about we have seen the the uh, figure about the life cycle of a product. Uh, so, you can check in the previous slide. So, upstream and downstream costs can account for a significant portion of total life cycle costs. Mm. Now, we are looking at cost of, of a product uh, in every step in the life cycle of the product. Um, in ACT 3131 and 3132, when we say uh, product cost, we always refer to uh, manufacturing cost only but now you have to start to think that product cost uh, is not only manufacturing cost but all costs at the every step in the life cycle of the product uh, like the design cost uh, the uh, marketing and sales cost etc so upstream and downstream cost uh, cost before the manufacturing uh, and cost after the manufacturing. Okay, see the second point there. Decision at the design stage commit a firm to to a given production, marketing, and service plan, and lock in most of the product's total life cycle cost. Uh, we have uh, we have discussed that point earlier. Uh, when you look at the uh, life cycle cost, you will see that. Uh, the design decision at the design stage uh, will affect cost at other uh, steps in the cycle. Uh, if you design a complete uh, a complex product, then all uh, cost in other steps in the cycle will will be higher. But if you design a, a, a not a, not a complex product, a simple product. Then the cost at other steps in the cycle uh, is lower, are lower, are low. Okay, so that is the thing that we have discussed before. Strategic pricing. So this one is about life cycle costing. This one is about strategic pricing. Strategic pricing decisions require information from the cost of life cycle, uh, the cost life cycle, and the sales life cycle. 
The cost information for pricing is commonly based on the four method based on one of four methods. Food manufacturing cost plus markup, life cycle cost plus markup, full cost and desired gross margin percent, full cost plus desired return on asset. Okay, let's see. This uh, pricing formulas. If you had to, uh, you, uh, you have to calculate price uh, for a product, then you have, and then you, uh, these are the formulas that you can use. Full manufacturing cost plus markup. So how to calculate that? Uh, price formula price equal to full manufacturing cost times 1 plus uh, 1 divided by markup yeah, 1 plus markup ok life cycle cost plus markup price equal to total life cycle cost times 1 plus markup full cost and desired gross margin percent uh, price equal to full manufacturing cost Divided by 1 minus desired gross margin percent. Full cost plus desired return on asset. Markup rate equal to desired before tax profit. Divided by life cycle cost of expected sales. Uh, so that is the markup rate. And then the price is equal to life cycle cost times 1 plus markup rate. So maybe, uh, maybe if I can find uh, SSS question related to this uh, related to this topic, I will share with you. Uh, I will make a video and I will share with all of you. Strategic pricing continued. Strategic pricing depends on the position of the product or service in the sale life cycle. Okay, remember the, uh, there are two life cycle that we have seen in the previous slide. In the previous lecture. I think there is a sale life cycle and production life cycle or something. Uh, product life cycle and sales life cycle. So, if you can remember, for the sales life cycle... You can see there are four stages or phases in the sales life cycle. Uh, the first one is in production phase. And then second one is the growth phase. Uh, the third uh, step or phase is the maturity phase. And the last one is the, decli the declining phase. So uh, there are different... Um, Pricing strategy for every phase uh, of the sales life cycle. For example, for phase 1, when the product is introduced, the pricing strategy is like this. Pricing is set relatively high to, re to recover development costs and take advantage of new product demand. Uh, it, when the, the product is at the grow, uh, growing phase or growth phase, uh, the pricing is likely to stay relatively high as the firm attempts to build profitability. So, when the demand for a product is increasing, uh, most businesses, they, they set a high price because there is a demand. Uh, but when, uh, bis uh, when the product uh, is at the phase 3, uh, the maturity maturity. Uh, Phase, the firm becomes more of a price taker than a price setter and attempts to reduce upstream and downstream costs. Uh, because at the maturity phase, uh, the demand uh, has not increased anymore, uh, will not increase anymore. So, uh, businesses, they will try to uh, they, 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 they want to reduce cost other rather than to to increase price uh, and then at fa uh, phase four uh, the declining phase volume and prices decline and the firm increases in emphasis on controlling upstream and downstream costs uh, peak load pricing 
designed to capitalize or on or modify consumer behavior. Examples include charging uh, different rates for peak and off peak cell phone minutes use, uh, and then charging more ki uh, per kilowatt electricity in the afternoon and the middle of the night. So, uh, we have seen this uh, pricing strategy uh, in Malaysia. See the, the the first example, charging different rates for peak and off peak cell phone minutes use. I think uh, I've seen that uh, a telephone company will charge you a, a high rate during the day, but if you uh, call after twelve midnight or something, you can get a cheaper rate uh, for your, uh, your for your mobile phone. Uh, you call using your mobile phone at after midnight, you can get cheaper rate. But I don't know now uh, the this pricing strategy is still uh, used or not. Because now most of the telephone business uh, companies, um, no, the mobile phone operator, they, I think they they give uh, uh, free, uh, free. Uh, no, they will not charge for phone call anymore. You pay like $50 per month. You can call uh, anybody at any time for like unlimited. Uh, that maybe I'm not sure about this. Peak and off peak cell phone minutes. Charging more per kilowatt of electricity in the afternoon than in the middle of the night. There are still businesses use this kind of uh, pricing. I think uh, if you check uh, the price for uh, cinema tickets, uh, if you purchase a uh, ticket uh, during the day, uh, you can get cheaper, uh, cheaper ticket during the day. But the ticket will be more expensive if you uh, purchase for... Uh, uh, during during uh, if you purchase ticket at night uh, because during the day there are not many many people want to go to cinema so the cinema wants to attract people they offer cheap uh, ticket price at night uh, most people want to go to cinema at night so the cinema is smart they charge higher uh, rate uh, for ticket at night so that's uh, how they try to to use the peak load pricing strategy so that they can get uh, uh, maximum profit for their business. Okay, this is the chapter summary. This chapter summarizes all the things that we have discussed in this in this topic. I hope you can read this summary. It is mostly about the target costing. The first half of the lecture is about target costing. So and then we have uh, we have uh, seen uh, explanation about the theory of constraint. That is important also. Uh, so the last point is good. Management accountants prepare information from both the perspective of the cost life cycle and the sales sales life cycle to help management make strategic pricing decision so the most important thing is uh, the the responsibility of a management accountant is to do something that can help manager to make the best decision uh, in this uh, topic it is about the the best pricing decision or the strategic pricing decision Thank you very much. This is the end of the this lecture. Uh, do not forget to write your name and metric number in the comment section. I will take that as the as the attendance for this uh, lecture today. Thank you very much.